Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi there, good morning. It is Monday, it is December 4th, and if I have this right, uh, Stephanie Cern has scorched over a thousand other runners this weekend <laughs> at the Rock and Roll Marathon. I don't know about that, but I finished. You the did, half yes. And she's got another yeah. uh, medal worthy of. I mean, you could wear that for Fiesta, right? I, of course. Congratulations. That's a, that's, a, that's a good idea. Thank you. So she did the half marathon uh, yesterday morning. Yes. Yes. And? Uh, it was great. The weather was great. Oh, there you go. There's a picture of my uh, coworker there, photojournalist, Miss Ayel Gomez. Uh, thank you, Miss Ayel, for pushing me to the finish line. We didn't start together because, it's, as you know, it's super crowded. We texted each other. We're like, hey, we're in front of City Hall. And uh, me too. I'm in Corral 7. Me too. We never found them. But then at mile seven i heard steph steph and, and it was Miss Ayel, and then you know we ran the race from mile seven on all the way to, to 13. all right folks so if you're wondering uh, how long a half marathon goes it took uh, steph two hours 10 minutes and like 35 well, seconds actually i forgot the seconds i'm going to look okay. at it right now but no yeah biggie. <laughs> but 210 and 210. you said it went pretty good yeah. until until the end oh yeah so mile nine you know got a little hot but you know that it's okay and then especially sure I, Mile, uh, mile 11, and Miss Al looked at me. He could sure. tell. He was like, you got this. You got this. I'm like, well, oh. keep in mind, a lot of folks, myself included, would be absolutely exhausted by two minutes, 10 seconds in oh, versus no. your two hours and two minutes. But nonetheless, huge crowd, great race here in San Antonio. Look at that aerial shot. Of all those, somewhere in there is Steph, and, and we're so proud of you. Oh, thank you so much. Well, probably not that shot. That's in the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's probably when I was, like, rolling in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to the that's, start line. That's how you roll. <laughs> that's how I okay. roll. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Well, the weather was perfect for our Sunday, and it continues on our Monday. Yeah, it turned out great. I, I think the question I have for you, Steph, is what music were you listening? Did you listen to music? Of course. What was your music of choice? I, I had it all. I mean, I, playlist. I had I had I had Drake, and then I even had like a what what slow song was I listening to? And I was like, why am I listening to a slow song right now? I guess I I guess <laughs> I feel like it chilling out. <laughs> Yeah, you, uh, you know, of course, you know, my, my crystal castles and, you know, just mm -hmm. all over the place. But perfect. Yeah, it was well, fun. congratulations. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, the, the weather did turn out beautiful for the race on Sunday, which we're happy for. And it's beautiful again today. We're going to see another gorgeous day. Let me take you outside. Temperatures right now are in the 50s. Uh, it was a little cooler odor. We did briefly drop down into the 40s but now making our way up to the 50s and eventually uh, 60s and then some 70s this afternoon. 56 at the airport at this hour, 50 in Bernie, 51 in Kerrville, so we've jumped out of the 40s everywhere. We've got a bit of a north wind, some reinforcing drier air working its way in. It'll be one of those days where we get a big swing in temperatures. We'll start off in the 40s, which we did this morning, 47, but we make our way up to 72 this afternoon for a whopping 25 degree temperature swing. So jackets in the morning, not so much in the afternoon. Pollen count, I know this is important to a lot of people this time of year because we are entering into cedar season. It is low today, it's at 30. We'll see where it ends up tomorrow. It's up a little bit from yesterday's count. Coming up here in just a little bit, did you see the sunset yesterday? Just incredible. In fact, we've had several days of beautiful sunsets. We'll talk about why they've been so great. That in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Stephen now, and hopefully the traffic is great. It's a little better, Justin. Uh, not as great as some of the sunsets that we've been seeing over the last few days, but we are seeing traffic pick up there at 37 near the Alamo Dome. Beautiful shot, though, of the tower as we tend to see it. Uh, 35 at 37, things have dwindled down, but we did have a few issues earlier this morning. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Right there along I-35 Southbound at Judson Road, there was a crash reported where one lane was blocked. It was reported as a pretty serious crash by TxDOT, but it does look like it's already cleared out and we're just seeing some of the residual congestion that tends to build out there around this time. So pack your patience, but we'll give you a wider look at our map now. A lot of that congestion has already disappeared and we're getting back to seeing plenty of green on our screen, but can't say the same for 1604 because we do have bridge construction that will ramp back up today. This should have already begun around nine this morning, but it finishes around three in the afternoon, but it's going to take us all the way to the end of the work week. December 8th, we'll see the I-10 eastbound frontage road lane closures that will be happening from the Loop 1604 interchange to UTSA Boulevard. And again, I know that's a lot of information on your screen, but if you scan this QR QR code. I've updated the list of closures on our website. It's ksat.com slash traffic. It's a new week, so we have a new week of closures, so know what to expect before you have to hit the roads. Guys, thank you. Here's today's 9 at 9.
A U.S. Navy destroyer and several commercial vessels were attacked by drones and missiles in the Red Sea as the war between Israel and Hamas rages on. The U.S. has vowed to consider all appropriate responses in the wake of the attack, specifically calling out Iran, who backed the Houthi rebels. Back in the war zone, Israel says it's now carried out more than 10,000 airstrikes in Gaza and reportedly killed a Hamas commander who helped carry out the October 7th attack on Israel. Today, the Supreme Court will review a $6 billion bankruptcy settlement between Purdue Pharma, the maker of OxyContin, and the victims devastated by the opioid crisis. If approved, the settlement would pay $6 billion to individual families, state health programs, and Native American tribes over the next 18 years. But if the deal is blocked, legal experts say it could set a precedent for how corporate bankruptcy cases are settled. Alaska Airlines is saying aloha to Hawaiian Airlines. They bought the carrier in a nearly $2 billion deal. The combined company would preserve both brands, which have few overlapping routes, and be headed by Alaska's CEO. If Hawaiian shareholders approve, the deal could happen as soon as next year. It also needs the okay from U.S. regulators who have resisted airline consolidation out of concern it could raise fares. A record number of people are expected to board cruise liners next year. The cruise vacation market is now approaching pre-pandemic levels. U.S. cruise operators plan to hike prices soon, so I'm actually running out of room. Cruise Lines International Association forecasts more than 35 million passengers will board a ship next year, up from about 31 million last year, a 6% increase from 2019. Something's happening that people haven't seen in three years, falling prices. Deflation largely limited to appliances, furniture, used cars, and other durable items. Prices are down year over year for five months in a row. Economists say inflation could go back down to the Federal Reserve's 2% target as soon as the second half of next year. Millions of U.S. students are receiving online therapy for free. At least 16 of the 20 largest public school districts are offering the sessions, many using federal pandemic relief money to foot that bill. It's a booming new business born out of America's youth mental health crisis, but some experts are raising concerns about the quality of care. Google is delaying the launch of its next generation AI model. Gemini AI was expected to debut next week with events already planned in New York and California, but reports say the rollout was pushed back until next year because Gemini is struggling with non-English prompts. PlayStation users are losing access to some TV shows. Sony says people who purchased digital shows made by Discovery will lose the content due to expiring license agreements. Hundreds of Discovery programs are being removed, including 19 Kids in County and Say Yes to the Dress. Hollywood has hit a rough patch. Industry analysts say sales slowed in November. Movie theaters grossed about $553 million last month. That's a 12% drop from a year ago. The long Thanksgiving weekend used to attract big crowds to the movies, but this year, the research group Comscore says theaters only grossed $173 million, short of pre-pandemic figures that averaged around $270 million. And that's today's Nine at Nine. And new at nine, a local program is giving students with disabilities a chance to learn job skills, build up their resume, and connect with the community. Tiffany Huerta shares the story of one Somerset High School senior who says this program gave her confidence and skills to help her after graduation. The holidays are here, and that means it's the busiest time of the year for grocery stores. Especially Thanksgiving. I was working here Thanksgiving, it was a little bit busy. And although it can get busy, Ruth Guerrero looks forward to coming to the HEB in Lytle every week. Connecting with HEB employees and shoppers brings her happiness. Thank you, you have a good day. The Somerset High School senior comes here once a week for about two hours, learning different job skills. I say good morning to the customers, to employees. Um, I start like getting stuff, start putting in the bags, like waters and stuff, um, me. Guerrero is part of Somerset High School's life skills program and the first student from the district 
to be part of HEB's Disability Bridges program. Right now, we're starting with Ruth and hopefully end up having some more participation by some of our other students, uh, getting that opportunity for them to, just to explore uh, different uh, uh, possibilities that they can do after they get out of get, uh, get out of the school system. Guerrero says this is only the beginning. The 18-year-old has big dreams. She hopes to land a job at HEB and continue her education. Planning to go to college to be a nurse. And for any student thinking about this program but hesitant, Guerrero has a message. I've been there too, like um, nervous or anything or scared, but at the end of the day, it gets better just by having confidence in yourself and just by like paying attention or how they tell you to do this stuff. Tiffany Huertas, Case at 12 News. 908, 56 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. A lot to talk about in sports this morning after the College Bowl games were announced. And David Sears and RJ Marcus will join us later in the show to talk about the matchups we're going to be watching. Uh, David's been talking since he walked in the newsroom this morning. It's just, <laughs> uh, it's just gone on and on. Yep. But we're going to hear more. Uh, plus, a new place to bring Spurs fans closer to the team they love. It's a space that belongs to both the pros and the public, the new Frost Plaza at the Rock at La Quintera. So a couple of months ago, we took you to the Spurs' new practice facility, but yesterday, the Frost Plaza was open to the public. As Courtney Friedman tells us, families are overjoyed to have a new place to connect, play, and celebrate their favorite team. As you know, the fans... Go Spurs, go! ...are diehard. Either Spurs way or no way. It's almost a silly question to ask Fred Castellanos and his kids how long they've been fans. My whole life, <laughs> forever, I've grown up and they kind of just got brought into it. I, of course, I'm not going to let them root for anybody else. The grand opening of the Frost Plaza at the Rock at La Cantera, a space bringing the public closer to the Spurs, including greats like Manu Ginobili. Oh, it's fantastic because, you know, many times um, the only place to to be close of this, to the Spurs is at, at the games. Families can get together, can eat, can celebrate, can watch. Can With an enormous screen, this will be the spot for fans to watch games together. It just, it brings us closer together. Future basketball stars got to join a skills clinic at the plaza today. You know, the city has uh, adopted basketball as, as, as an identity. So it's good that, the, it's great that the kids are gonna be able to play here. Frostbank CEO Phil Green says the plaza is just the beginning. In this area of San Antonio where there's a lot of land that, and I think it's just going to be the, the center of additional development that will include places to live with people, places to eat for people. The Spurs, you know, bring us together and of course it's always fun to support the community and the building of the Spurs and we want them to stay here for many, many, many more years to come. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And soon a new restaurant will open at Frost Plaza. There'll be food trucks. Plus, we hear a splash pad is in the plans, too, which is great because it could be 100 degrees next week. You never know <laughs> around here, right? That's very true. And Manu also said one of the things he loves about the park is that it connects to other trails in the city, promoting health and a connection to the outdoors. A busy part of town just got busier, though, for sure. All right, let's go outside with Live Cam 56 degrees. And I tell you what, it's one of those beautiful, deep blue sky kind of days. It is. There, there's not a cloud in the sky this morning. Now, last night, I don't know if you stepped outside right around sunset. You guys might have already gone to bed at that point. But the sunset was incredible. Both Saturday and Sunday night. Yeah, it was al almost three days in a row. Yeah. Pretty. Uh, we have some pictures. This one was on our KSAC Connect. Just incredible. Uh, the colors that we saw last night. And... We had a few people asking, well, well, why is that? Why were the last few nights, why were the sunsets better than we normally see? Well, here's why. So if you look at the setup last night, this is around 5 p.m. We had a deck of high clouds that kind of split San Antonio. Uh, so the, the clouds were in the right location. And when you get these sunsets uh, at, at sunrise and sunset, the rays of light from the sun pass through more atmosphere because it's a lower angle, okay? So they scatter out more. So you're already getting good colors at sunrise and sunset. But when you add clouds into the mix, they intercept more sunlight, especially the high clouds. So they produce more colors. So when you're looking for really brilliant sunrises and sunsets, you want to see these serious decks, which is what we got yesterday. They also contain ice crystals that refract the light. So you're getting all sorts of colors. and you, you gotta keep in mind the orange and red wavelengths are a little bit longer, so they tend to come out 
when you get these, uh, these kind of situations versus the blues and violets, which we see with the blue sky. Uh, so at any rate, uh, this is why the sunset last night was just so perfect. And you got colors like this. That was the edge of the cloud cover right there. And then it just produced the oranges and reds. It was, it was great. Don't know that we'll see that again today because these high clouds are starting to shift out and move away from the area. 56 right now at the airport, 57 in New Braunfels, 56 in Seguin, 52 in Bernie, 51 in Kerrville. We've got a northerly wind, so we're getting a secondary push of drier air, and that's going to make for great weather today, pretty much cloud free. As far as temperatures go, I think around 72 here in San Antonio, 72 in Somerset, 69 King and Lake, 69 in New Braunfels. We look at the satellite picture. Yeah, those high clouds are moving away now off into the Gulf of Mexico. So it's pretty much cloud free around here. And as we look at the big picture, not a lot going on. we got a little system that's working through Kentucky right now with some rain, some snow there, some snow up across parts of Maine, a little bit active weather out west. But this is a pretty quiet weather pattern all in all. And uh, ridge pipe pressure kind of moves in next few days. It keeps things quiet. We will start to see some moisture try to return on Thursday. And that may result in a little bit more cloud cover. And then as we head towards the weekend, that's when we start to see some changes. We get a trough digging out west on Friday. And then by Saturday, that helps to push a front through. Now, I wish I could tell you we're going to get some good rain chances with this front. We're just not. It's, it's not a good setup. We don't have the right amount of moisture. So if we're going to see anything, maybe a shower. That's it. Turns windy and cooler by Saturday afternoon. And... Uh, we'll see some cooler weather uh, going into Sunday. Dew point trend. Uh, the dew points will steadily climb. It'll be dry next couple of days. But by the time we get into Thursday and Friday, you may start to notice the humidity a little bit more as the dew points climb into the 50s and 60s. And again, that will result in a little more cloud cover. It just doesn't produce us a lot of rain. Our only chance there is on Saturday with the front, and we're putting at 10%. That is it. So the extended forecast. 74 tomorrow, 71 Wednesday, 70 on Thursday, 76 on Friday. Small chance of rain windy on Saturday with that front. It does cool us down. We'll be back in the 60s on Sunday with uh, morning lows down in the 40s. 40s, okay, kind of more like December-like, I guess. Yeah, but, you know, uh, it is notable that we have yet to hit freezing here in San Antonio, and there we do have cold mornings, but not super cold. True. We can handle it. We can handle it. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. 18 minutes past the hour, 57 degrees. And a big deal in the airline industry, another merger being proposed. The big question now, how will it affect passengers? Plus a potential turning point in the opioid e epidemic, the U.S. Supreme Court reviewing a major bankruptcy settlement for the maker of OxyContin. The ramifications of the Supreme Court's decision coming up. And don't forget, you can help a child in need of shoes by donating a new pair to any San Antonio Police Department substation around the city. They are collecting new shoes and new socks for little kids all the way up to teenagers until next Tuesday. So it's part of their Share the Shoes campaign, benefiting Zabatos. And besides needing shoes and socks for children of various ages, one of their special requests are shoes for wide feet. So keep that in mind if you're thinking of donating. Going back to some of our big headlines today, a legal battle stemming from the opioid crisis and who's to blame for it? Supreme Court hears a case today that could have implications far beyond the pharmaceutical industry. ABC's Derek Dennis explains what those are. It's a potential watershed moment in the opioid epidemic. Today, the Supreme Court will review a $6 billion bankruptcy settlement between Purdue Pharma, the maker of OxyContin, and the victims and communities ravaged by the opioid crisis. At issue, the deal gives Purdue Pharma's owners, the Sackler family, immunity, protecting them from lawsuits. The, the victims fought for this plan because they want to help people who have lost loved ones who have been affected by the opioid crisis to recover money. Attorney Edward Niger helped negotiate the settlement and wants it upheld. But the Justice Department is opposed, arguing there must be unanimous consent among all the claimants to give the Sackler family, which made billions off OxyContin, immunity. The Sacklers may be bad people, but they're not stupid people. And they will not give any money to abate the opioid crisis or to victims to help rebuild their lives unless they get those releases. If they really want to make a lesson of what the Sacklers did, they can 
and should criminally prosecute this anguish. Ellen Isaacs lost her son Ryan to an overdose after he was prescribed OxyContin at 16 years old. Her attorney, Michael Quinn, is seeking a jury trial to keep the Sackler family on the hook. In a way, this case is about deterrence. It's about holding corporate leaders and owners uh, accountable for their business decisions. If approved, the bankruptcy settlement would pay $6 billion to individual families, state health programs, and Native American tribes over the next 18 years. But if the deal is blocked, legal experts say it could set a precedent for how corporate bankruptcy cases are settled. Derek Dennis, ABC News. A major move in the travel industry is also making headlines this morning. Alaska Airlines has come to terms on a deal to purchase Hawaiian Airlines, according to officials from both companies. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, the combined organization will be based in Seattle, but Alaska Airlines says it will establish a major hub in Honolulu. The two airlines who bear the names of the 49th and 50th states are joining forces. We are coming together and joining networks. Um, and uh, this will be pro-consumer uh, and pro-competition. For a price tag of $1.9 billion, Alaska Air announced its plans to buy Hawaiian Airlines. Both airlines bring a tremendous amount to uh, the table here, and it's, it's uh, going to be a, a great combination going forward. The agreement between the two former rivals calls for both carriers to hold on to their individual names. These brands uh, are so beloved in the areas uh, that they serve uh, and the massive amount of loyalty that they've accrued over the years that we're going to do something unique and, uh, and deploy both brands and the combined company. Officials say the combined airline will have more than 1,200 departures per day and will be able to compete with bigger airlines like American, Delta, Southwest, and United. I'm excited about the, what this combination does uh, for the business, and I'm so excited about the opportunities uh, that our guests and our employees have with the business going forward. The deal, which is expected to plod along like a taxiing plane, could take between 9 and 18 months to hammer out, and it needs the approval from the boards of both carriers and U.S. regulators. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The Association of Flight Attendants that represents thousands of flight attendants for both airlines issued a statement on the deal. They say they will be paying close attention to the merger to see if it will improve conditions for flight attendants. So more details to come out about this deal. 926, 57 degrees. When we come back, we are heading out to one of Santa's workshops. Welcome back. Just about 930. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas and San Antonio police are stepping up and helping out several local families across our community. It's all part of their Blue Santa program and our Max Massey joins us at Santa's Warehouse to tell us more about this campaign. Hey, good morning, Max. Good morning, guys. Blue Santa and Santa's Warehouse never disappoints, especially this year. Take a look around. We have dinosaurs. We have basketball. For Christmas, guys, I just want the Spurs to start winning, neither here nor there. And of course, it is the year of Barbie, so we have all of the Barbies. But it really is amazing. I mean, like you guys said, San Antonio police stepping up, helping out year after year in the Blue Santa program. Joined here with Alonzo Harden. So what do the numbers look like so far? So far, Max, the numbers uh, currently with children, we're at about uh, 3,000. Last year, we did a little over six. So there's plenty of time to still register. Uh, you have until December the 10th and uh, go by any police substation, fill out the application, and uh, let us bring the Christmas joy to you and your family. Okay, so I'm gonna ask our photographer, Robert, take a look around, look around. We were talking earlier, these officers, they transform this time of year. Who are they now? They are actually officers. They are officers, and they transform from police officers to officers. It's a great opportunity for our police officers to engage in the community, and this is just a lot of fun. This is great. Awesome. In terms of the holiday season, you guys are out and about in the community. You talk to so many families. What does it mean to these families out around San Antonio? It means a lot, Max. It means um, just bringing that Christmas joy, uh, allowing the uh, police officers to come out. It's just a great feeling. It's a great time of year, and it's a win-win situation for both the officers and uh, the citizens of uh, and the children of, of San Antonio. It's just a great time. It's probably my favorite time of the year. Last year, you guys had about 5,000 kids yes. who got presents from Blue Santa. Yep. This year, 
You want to reach that number again? We want to reach that number again. So San Antonio, we need your help. Uh, the last day to apply is December the 10th. You can go to any police substation, provide a birth certificate, proof of address, uh, water bill, something of the like, and fill out that application. Again, December the 10th is the last time to fill out that application and let us bring the Christmas joy to you. And for those of you that want to make donations, visit sapdbluesanta.org and click on donate. We take all unwrapped new gifts and any monetary donations that you would like to provide to our organization. Officer Harden, thank you so much. We know there's a lot of information, guys. So if you want to help out, donate, help local families, or if you are a local family who want to sign up, we have all that information. Just head to ksat.com. Mark, Seth, back to you guys. Thank you, Max. A lot of toy donations so far. That's right. Outside with live cam, I never wish anyone to get, you know, a speeding ticket or pulled over. But after Max's live shot, I would say, to, hate to say, accidentally slip and what seems to be the problem, officer? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Don't do that. Uh, Don't do that. I do like that name, though, Elphicer. That's cool. Uh, let me show you a picture from uh, last night. Once again, I, we already talked about the sunsets, how beautiful they were, but this is just another great shot. Uh, we got a lot in on our KSAC Connect. You can check those out, by the way, on our website. Uh, we have all the KSAC Connect pictures there, but the colors were fantastic last night. We got down to 47 this morning here in San Antonio, some low 40s in places like Hondo and Uvalde, even down to 39 in Carrizo Springs. It was a chilly morning, but things are warming up quickly and we'll see 70 by one o'clock in the low 70s this afternoon. Picture perfect. Sunny skies, 72 light winds, just the way we like it in early December. Uh, we've got some more great weather on the way before some changes this weekend. That extended forecast for you coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. Well, the college football playoffs are set and the bowl season ready to go. David and RJ here to talk about some of the controversy behind the Final Four and the rest of the football action this weekend. RJ, you Ooh. missed it. David's been oh. rolling okay. since he walked in the door. I got a little taste of this. Yes, yes outside the studio. <laughs> Uh, he was already, uh, yeah, he was going on several different angles, tangents here. Okay, David. The committee got it right. <laughs> oh, We've got God. the four oh, best wow. teams mm -hmm. in the playoffs. I'm sorry, FSU. You didn't look that great the last two games of the season. You're not going to the playoff this year. The committee got it right. Michigan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Washington, Texas, and Alabama. Oh, well, I do agree with that. I agree that the job of the committee was to get the best four teams. These are the best four teams, and these are the best matchups. I also do feel that, you know what, the system here, and I'm glad that this is last year that we're going to get the final four because this system needs to go away because – it was an impossible situation to be in. I, I mean, how do you leave out an undefeated Florida State team that beat LSU, David, that beat Florida on the road, that won their conference, that went undefeated? You're basically saying to the rest of these players that, you know what, you lost your quarterback, but you know what, the, the rest of you guys don't matter in the long run here. Now, you know and how I you, get you, it. And you know I, how you and tell I, them that? Florida State is not better than those other four teams. I agree with that. You know how you tell them that? You go, here are the guidelines. <laughs> Here's the guidelines with the committee follow. If you don't like the guidelines, change the guidelines. It's in the guidelines mm -hmm. that if you use lose one of your major players, they lost their quarterback, mm -hmm. they lost their second string quarterback. They were playing their third string quarterback. He threw for what, 55 yards the other he day? Did, yeah. That was I watched yeah. every one of those games. Well, I didn't watch all the Michigan games because I figured that would be good. I was slipping back. Yeah. I was so glad that Law and Order SVU was not a rerun because this game was horrible. I was like, I'm that flip back. I was watching I mean, two this things. Game, I, I was yeah, this and SVU. Go. I was like, and I, I got all the SVU show. I mean, it was great. That, it was a, and it was a two-part series of the SVU thing, I think. So it was like two hours. <laughs> this, that game was horrible. Mm -hmm. it, it, it didn't pass the eye test. It didn't pass the taste test. It passed, not, it passed the, this is a horrible game test is what that passed. Well, it was I, terrible. I mean, and look, I think most people would agree with you, David, you. on that. And I would say, again, this is, this is the best match. These are the best four yes, teams are. that are involved here. But again, you should not have penalized the entire Florida State team. The system was broken. Who you gonna, okay, who you gonna not penalize? Fair. Who you okay, penalize? I knew you were going to ask me this. Okay. I knew you were going to ask me who this. Gonna penalize? I, I think I personally, I think Florida State should have gotten in. Uh -huh. I would have put Florida State in it, and then it would have been an arg a discussion between Alabama and Texas. And then mm -hmm. at that point, I don't know. I probably take Alabama out. Sorry to hear that. 
<laughs> well, because because they beat Texas. That was the second game of the well, season. Texas beat Alabama. So yes. if you go by what the coach of uh, of FSU says, why well, we play the games, and then if you lose a game at the early season, and you should just quit the season and not play the rest of it because you don't have a chance because you've lost a game. That doesn't make any sense. Here and here's the here's here's the here's the irony of this whole thing. Here's the irony of this whole thing. Do you know that this year we should have a 12-team playoff? Uh, we should have. And yes. you know who it's voted against a 12-team playoff that caused it not to happen the this year? ACC commissioner. The commissioner of the, the ACC. Do you know who's that, screaming yeah. and and to high heaven about how they got robbed, how they, this shouldn't be it? The ACC commissioner. Yeah. You shot yourself in the foot, my yeah. man. Yeah. You did this. <laughs> you created this. You. That's and that's just a sidebar. Thing. I mean, again, I, he I, did. I, all that, I'm all sorry. that being said, the, this is the best final four possible. The committee was put in a tough situation. Justin, I see him. He was just shaking his head okay. over there. Okay. I have a question. So what happens if FSU beats Georgia? And Congratulations. You beat Georgia. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> then they could do – haven't, haven't these teams done, like, these self-proclaimed, yeah. like, uh, college football yeah. championships yep. in the past? Yeah, where they just kind of claim it for themselves. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen, Justin. But, again, yeah, it, it is an I, interesting thought process. I will say this. I think the Orange Bowl, which is FSU and Georgia, mm -hmm. I think that would be one of the highest rated Orange Bowls yeah. ever watched. Yeah, because people true. are going to be see – they want to see how Georgia responds after losing mm -hmm. and getting knocked out. I mean, you can make the argument that Georgia should be in there. Well, I was going to say 29 I mean, if, straight, if, two championships in a row, well, one Florida, loss. If Florida State is not one of the best teams, then why were they ranked ahead of Georgia? Yeah. I mean, Georgia's a better team than Florida State. Sure if that's going to be the argument that the so, committee is going to have. Well, but, I, I would uh, like to say this. I, I do kind of want to give Steph her moment that UT made. Right. Made right. it. Okay. Yay. Here we go. The horns are in. I mean, not like I was playing out there in the field. But, no, but I, yay. Know, I know. Hey, and you know what's so great hard. about that is UT's leaving, so say goodbye <laughs> for all the non-UT fans. Wow. Wave goodbye. But here's, here's the best part. They're leaving behind like $6 million because they made the playoff. Mm -hmm. So the conference gets six million bucks wow. so we thank you, thank you. As, I mean, you as you go I out the door get that back and you go to the SEC, the SEC it's, we it's thank a, you for a little money it's yeah. a nice way to wrap up the big 12. Yeah. plus <laughs> it's not your student fee anymore is it yeah. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yeah. that was almost as bad Ooh, as the lsu yeah. as the florida state game yeah this is uh Ooh. but anyway yeah, all right uh, texas so, taking care of business good right. for ut so we're good on we're good on the top four those are the top four yeah we're good in the final four overall it's going to be some great games next year we got the 12 so you know, we'll look forward to next yeah. year, but let's get through this year. Hey, we got a game here, too. New Year's Day is going to be great. This is a fun one. And this yeah. is going to be fun. Yeah. Speaking of Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah. Who beat Texas, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yes, the So if only, you want to go all through all that scenario again. So. Yeah. And Arizona. That's going to be a great game. Uh, Arizona program on the why rise they out these there in the West so Coast. Uh, it's TV, David. It's, it's like all about TV here. Yeah. Man, I'm going to take a long nap for this one shows up. This is like you're taking a nap in the middle going on our soapbox rant about the game time now. Well, I've got nothing else for this one. <laughs> You've got nothing for this one. Yeah. This is a great matchup. Great job by the Alamo Bowl. Who knows what this is going to look like in the future now that the Big 12s or the Pac 12s out of the picture, but great matchup there. Hey, can we UTSA, talk about the Scooters Marshall. Coffee Frisco Bowl? <laughs> yes. Let's do it. Uh, yes. UTSA is back in the Frisco Bowl, David. Uh, Aiden for this season. Wow. Trying to figure out, you know what? Coach Jeff Tra Trailer said that he was glad that they're going to stay in the state of Texas in a warmish location yeah. during yeah. December, and they're going to be close to home. I yeah. have to admit, I oh, looked boy. at my wife and I said, I don't know where this stadium is. Never. It's oh, the up in uh, Dallas Burn play, David, yeah, the MLS like, team. I've yeah. like never, never been there before. And so. I've heard that Marsh wow. is pretty tough. So yeah. uh, there we'll, we go. We'll be All right. Here we go. That's right. really what we're talking about. We have about a floor, it. RJ. Go ahead. Was All this right. graphic necessary? <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> Wait, we're talking about the Texas Tech part of this? <laughs> yeah. Both parts of this. <laughs> All right, Texas State, the Bobcats, first sure. ever bowl appearance in program history since moving over to Division I. They're going to play Rice in okay. the first responder bowl. That's going to be at SMU Stadium, David. All right. Uh, Gerald Ford yeah, I know State. where that is. Yeah. Now, yeah. now I'm pulling for Cal. Go ahead, David. <laughs> wow. Okay, wow. be that way. All right. The Independence wow. Bowl. That is a bowl other. game there. So, And that one's at 8.15. There's another late night. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. I don't understand this. But anyway, Texas Tech. <laughs> No. Uh oh, another AP. <laughs> All right, there we go. The Texas and, Bowl. All right, Justin, what do you got here? Uh, oh, come on. What do you mean? What do I got? <laughs> you got, got this. Nothing. It's uh, Oklahoma State is okay. I don't want to get emails. Yeah, but okay. they they've had an up and down season. I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think AM is going to go out with a win on this. Yeah. One. Oh, do okay. you? All right. Nice. nice. Yeah. yeah. Aggies and, and Cowboys. Fisher. This game's in Houston, right? 
Yep. Texas Bowl, right? Yes, Energy Texas Stadium. Bowl. That's yeah. right. There we go. Very good. good stuff right. there. Okay. That's a lot of good bowl, bowl games. <laughs> coming this week. Oh, and we had NFL action this oh, weekend, David. Here we that. go. The Texans. How about the Texans? Uh, the Broncos were red hot going into this game in Houston and C.J. Stroud. Good defense at the end, take care of business, and uh, Houston yeah, improves a, to 7-5. and five. Well, It was less than two minutes to play, mm -hmm. and the Texans picked off a pass in the end zone mm -hmm. to save the win, and they're now 7-5, and five, and they are definitely in the middle of the playoff hunt, at least for a wild card spot. Yeah. So how about those Texans? A yeah. rookie coach and a rookie quarterback. See, and they beat the hottest team in the league right there. They yeah. got a guy that, yeah. Yeah, and look, look what he's doing. <laughs> well, <laughs> CJ Stroud has done some nice things for them. Okay, we had another big game here. Cowboys, of course, played on Thursday, so the game a lot of Cowboys Ooh. fans are watching. Right. 49ers go into Philly, take care of business. And the Cowboys now, David, are one game behind the one Eagles going into yeah. this matchup yeah. Sunday thank, night here. Thank you. You, By the way, it. thank you, San Francisco, yeah. for beating Philly last night. <laughs> the best part of this one, and we can't, we, can't, we can't show you that right now, but there was a player – and the head of the security for the team oh, both, yeah. got yeah. both got both yeah. got thrown out crazy. of the game. That was, that was a like, wild scene. They started yeah. going, that going chewed up some time last yeah. night. Yeah, that was uh, that was kind of interesting. The head of security, his name was Big Dom. Yeah, he's a big guy, man. He's, uh, he's, he's, like, he's a big guy. Um, huge dude. Yeah, 49ers though, David. They take care of business. 49ers wow. now nine and three. Cowboys nine and three. Philadelphia ten and two. Detroit's nine and three. So it's going to be a fun uh, fun race here down the stretch. But Cowboys. They get their wish. They get the Eagles at home mm -hmm. with a chance to uh, get in the division it's lead. Yeah. The Eagles the haven't looked that good no. the last two or three weeks. No, they haven't. Actually. No. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. the Cowboys got a chance now. So. Okay. Come on, Dak. <laughs> Alex, wow. our producer, very happy that we, we talked about the 49ers. Yeah. Yep. yep. So, we've covered a lot of ground, guys. Thank we have. you. Yes, All right. absolutely. All right. Check your blood pressure. All right. 943, check your pulse. You can do it <laughs> like this, okay? So, uh, 943, 58 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. Just about 947, if you haven't heard yet, the KSAC Garden in our front yard here on North St. Mary's is thriving right now. And the late start on fall lake temperatures after a hotter than average summer has allowed plants like tomatoes and peppers to continue to produce. But one question we've been getting is, is it too late to plant winter veggies? Well, in this edition of Gardening with KSAC, our Sarah Costa tells us what she suggests planting now before we get our first freeze. Last week I showed you how to take advantage of leftover grocery store bought garlic and how to plant them. I had a positive response from that story from our viewers online. I even had Chris Riojas email me saying, I love your gardening segment. Aw, thanks Chris, but what can I plant now this season? Great question. Ideally you would like to get your winter veggies planted earlier, but as our KSAT weather authority team says, Oh hi! Following our hottest summer on record, fall temperatures were a little delayed. On average, we would have seen our first freeze in San Antonio by now, and we're not expecting freezing temperatures over the next seven days. So let's take advantage of the extra time we have of these warmer temps to get our winter vegetables in the ground. You can plant mature transplants of greens like spinach, lettuces, and kale. For herbs, transplants of rosemary and cilantro work. You can also plant in-ground produce, like transplant onions. You can even sow your carrot seeds anytime through the winter. These are all winter-hardy plants that enjoy cooler temps and can tolerate moderate freezes. Happy gardening! I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 58 degrees out there, beautiful yeah. day. Absolutely beautiful. 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 Nice. And yes, there is not a freeze in the forecast yet. Mm. I'm okay with that. I'm yeah. okay. I may be in the minority. I actually went and mowed my yard. Uh, this weekend. It's a good was, weekend to do that. I was good with it. I was good with it. It's still green. Uh, let's go outside for you. Yes, 56 right now. It is nice. Dew point is at 30. Northerly winds at 13, gusting to 22. So winds are trying to pick up a little bit. We've got a push from drier air starting to work in. Doesn't really make a big impact on our forecast today, but know that winds will be a little bit gusty this morning out of the north. Let's look at the big picture here across the country. Not a lot of cold air. You know, that's one thing that's kind of been standing out to me so far. Uh, late this fall is that we haven't had a lot of those big pushes of cold air. There's been some, but, uh, you know, 28 in Minneapolis, that's not that cold. It's 32 in International Falls, a place that can get very cold this time of year. So most of the country is dealing with pretty average numbers. Miami continues to be the nation's hot spot, as it often is. 81 degrees there at this hour. Across Texas, 30s, 40s, 50s, and then some 60s as you get down to the coast. 38 in Amarillo, 35 in Lubbock. Uh, we're in the 50s here. Not bad this morning. And 
The forecast today takes us up to 69 noontime, 70 at 1 o'clock, 72 at 3 p.m., 72 at 4 p.m. Sunny skies, and those winds will ease up a little bit later this afternoon. As we get into tonight, 54 at 8 p.m., 52 at 9 o'clock. Great evening, too. Here's the long-term forecast, and high pressure in the upper level starts to move in. That means pretty quiet weather through Wednesday. By the time we get into Thursday, we'll start to get a little bit of moisture return, but still, it's not going to be a, a big problem. Uh, by Friday, storm system starts to take shape out west. This helps to push front through on Saturday. There is a small window, and I do mean small, uh, to get a couple of showers with this front on Saturday, but I don't think uh, it's going to produce really any important rain for us. It's all going to be off to our east. So the uh, main takeaway from this is that it will be cooler by Saturday afternoon and windy as we head into Sunday. Uh, wind forecast calls for gusts to start to pick up by Saturday. Uh, with that front, some gusts 30 to maybe 35 miles per hour out of the north. We'll see what that does to the mountain cedar count. Hopefully it doesn't kick it up a whole lot, but that's something to keep in mind. Temperature-wise, really great temperatures all the way into Saturday before that front comes through, and then the temperatures do fall off some. 62 Sunday on Monday, we could be looking at highs, low 60s, maybe even upper 50s. Rainfall this year, though, this is the one problem. We're not getting much rain with this front. There's not much rain in that forecast in general. You'll notice we're nearly a foot below average when it comes to rainfall this year. It's been another, another rough year. Again, we're hoping that this thing starts to change a little bit, the overall pattern, but man, we still need some rain in the worst way. And again, it's just not showing up here in the seven day forecast. 74 tomorrow, 71 Wednesday, more clouds Thursday into Friday. There's that cool down over the weekend with the cold front. Uh, we'll get those morning lows back in the 40s by Sunday morning. All right, more like December for those who like the cooler weather. Exactly. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. 951, 58 degrees. Look out there with zoo cam on this nice morning. Oh, hippo, top right, let's see. Oh, I, I kind of see it. Yeah, so the hippos are out this morning. And is that, I forgot the duck's name. Kevin, I was going to say Larry. No, Kevin. Kevin the Duck is there. And don't forget, if you want to continue to watch this live stream to catch the hippo in action, that is on our website at kset.com. Most of these wishes will never be granted. Wish fell to fifth place in its second weekend, earning $7.4 million. Trolls Band Together stayed in fourth place. The animated threequel made $7.6 million. The Japanese kaiju film Godzilla Minus One opened in third place, stomping off with $11 million. I am Dr. Volumnia Gall, your humble head game maker. After two weekends on top, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes fell to second, adding $14.5 million for a Domestic total of 121 million. Don't know what you're waiting for. Cuff it. Beyonce is the queen of the box office. Her concert movie Renaissance, a film by Beyonce, debuted number one, starting its run with $21 million. And that's a look at your weekend box office results. And I need to go to the movies. <laughs> I'm behind on all of it. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day.